Life expectancy continues to rise, with the world's population and retirement age expected to hit 1.5 billion by the year 2050 for life science company Bayer. They're using their 150 year history and core competences to improve patient outcomes. Coming up, we'll find out how. I'm Greg Fairley. Welcome to 50 Mina Leaps. Great. Well, um, Henrik Wolf, great to see you and welcome to 50 MENA Leaders. Well, thank you for having me. Can you just, um, first of all, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your role here at, at Bayer? Yeah, I can. I'm, uh, I'm 65. I'm Danish. I uh, worked in Bayer for 22 years. Uh, been in other companies before I joined Bayer. Uh, and have had the pleasure of, or the challenge, or the opportunity to lead different countries uh, for the pharmaceutical division. Uh, so I've done jobs in Ireland, I've done jobs in, in Poland, in a cluster like Scandinavia, in a cluster like the Nordics. And uh, since five years, I've, I've come to Dubai uh, to lead uh, Bayer, uh, not only the pharmaceutical division, but also the bigger parts of Bayer uh, for the Middle East. I mentioned in my introduction um, an interesting figure, which is that the, the world's retirement population, retirement age population, will reach 1.5 billion by the year 2050. Yeah. Um, so it, there's a, there's a, and also there's a growing number of people in the world in general. Yeah. What challenges does that present for you, Paya? Well, uh, you know, first of all, uh, it's, it's all about really uh, looking at it and, what we, uh, and trying to talk about what will this mean. Uh, I mean, the population will go up by about 2 billion uh, over, the uh, over the next 20 years. Uh, and of course, also age uh, will change. So we'll be much, much more elderly people. So people are above the age of 60, 65. And when, when people get to that age, it's typically when they start to develop chronic diseases. It's typically when cardiovascular uh, diseases hits them. It's typically when cancer hits them. Uh, so you will get a much, uh, I would say, in relevant terms, much bigger uh, disease burden in, in an aging population, and that is growing bigger. Um, so I think, uh, you know, not only are we dealing with the challenge of almost having a population increase of 30% over the next 20, 25 years, which it by itself is an enormous challenge, not only in healthcare, but also in, in other parts. So just about how do we feed the world? How do we feed the world sustainably? Uh, what technologies do we need to develop actually to help us feed the, feed the planet? And I think, uh, you know, this about feeding the planet has become a big topic now uh, after the Russian-Ukrainian war, uh, where we, we see uh, prices on, on wheat and other corns are, are just going through the roof uh, because of not, not enough volumes. And, and so this is, a, this is probably a point where we all really have to wake up and say, whoa, what's going to happen when we're two billion more? But coming back to the aging population and healthcare, well, we will have to uh, sort of reinvent ourselves. But I think we are on very good track. You touched on the importance of technology mm -hmm. in order to achieve mm -hmm. these goals. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about how digital and, and technology is changing your business. Well, I mean, it, it changed our business in, in, in different parts. Now, I represent uh, a sales and marketing organization uh, headquarters out of Dubai covering Middle East. And uh, we have for years actually been talking about, do we offer the right services to our customers? Uh, is it, is it a modern way of servicing our customers by actually going to visit them in their hospitals, in their clinics, and talk to them about uh, various uh, uh, therapeutic options? Uh, now, that has been the model for many years, where we actually moved ourselves from A to B and went to see the doctor one-to-one -one very typically. Then, uh, as we all know, um, you, know you get into uh, uh, 2020, and 2020 was, you know, March, I think it was around that time, the world come to a closure uh, because of COVID. 
Now that, of course, uh, also meant that we were not able to go and see our customers the way we did in the past. So we, we really had to reinvent ourselves. Um, so we started and we were one of the first companies out in servicing our customers in a virtual room. So we met them, so two uh, teams, Zoom, but also other rooms that we created. And, and we have discovered that not only can we service our customers better this way by doing it virtually, but we can also give them much better experiences because we can bring them together across the world. And I remember in particular on one occasion, uh, we had some doctors from, uh, from Dubai. We put them in this virtual room. Basically, they were all sitting uh, at home, but we brought them into this virtual room and then we introduced two professors from the US and they were just blown away with the fact that they were now sitting with some of the most prestigious uh, opinion leaders uh, within their speciality of this world. And they say, wow, if you can do that, then I really want to, uh, you know, get more of this. So I think out of this have come this new way of servicing customers and, and really trying to switch it from very analog channels, uh, face to face, one to one to actually start to serve us in, in, in a more digital space. Henrik, what's happening with something we've heard a lot about over the years, which is, which is cell and gene therapy innovation? Oh. Oh. And, and what's Spire doing to, well, to that's, produce that's, that innovation? I think that's, that's sort of, uh, that's the, it is so, it is putting out such a big promise. Because with uh, gene editing, which is, basically only about four or five years old, and stem cell therapies, we can now see, we can even maybe even touch it, we can see that we will go from treating diseases to curing diseases. Uh, I just became a grandfather, and I can tell you, I am not at all worried about my grandchild ever dying from cancer. Wow. When she, she reached my age, I don't think we have cancer any longer. Interesting. Or rather, we can manage cancer. We can maybe manage the disease or we can cure the disease. Um, and I think these new technologies... Uh, That's all forms of cancer. Uh, well, all forms of, of cancer. I mean, cancers are, you know, we have about nine to 10 million cancers worldwide. About one third is dying from the disease. So it's a big, big uh, medical issue that, that we are not good at treating cancer, but just in the last five, six years, I mean, we have seen the birth of immuno-oncology, which is already now curing. We have a product in Bayer, uh, a, a, a product uh, that if you, have the, if you have the right, if you are a patient with, of the right type, in terms of how you're composed genetically, and you get this drug in case you have cancer, you are being cured. We have two examples from Saudi Arabia where we actually cured two babies. It's just, you know, knowing these stories and knowing that our team in Saudi Arabia stands behind this and actually making it possible for this baby to get the medicine, it's just so, you know, so heartwarming. Um, and I think uh, cell and gene, we in Bayer, we are, we are in, in a matter of, I would say, not, not many, many years, but many, many months. So in a matter of a, a few years, we have now become one of the leading factors in, in gene editing and, 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 and stem cell therapy. We have acquired companies. We have adapted our, uh, our R&D model. Uh, we are now much more working collaborative with with an ecosystem of startups and uh, in a, uh, so we we have acquired uh, majority shares in, in a few companies that is really promising uh, so ask bio uh, and blue rock um, and in particular blue rock is now in in phase one in parkinson we are getting a readout of the of the data i think within uh, within months uh, now, will we have the, uh, you know, the treatment of, of Parkinson? that we'll have to see. But just the fact that we are now doing this in Parkinson is just an amazing thing because there has been nothing in Parkinson mm, for definitely. many, many years and so many people. So, so people many could people. actually just take a drug and, and 
Well, it's not quite that simple, but yes, uh, the, 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 the possibility of curing or restoring the brain function is there and that's the ambition behind this this particular initiative but you can you can so you know in in old days and old days i don't mean you know when i was born i mean old days just maybe 10 years ago uh, we were when we developed products we were talking about developing a new antihypertensive developing a new molecule that would do something in a very particular disease area now that that is changing now because uh, gene editing is not about one disease, it's about many diseases. So now when, when you master stem cell therapy, when you master gene editing, that technology can be used across, across many diseases. And um, that is fascinating because it, 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 it turns our research totally upside down. And, and I have to admit, I don't know what next therapeutic area will be the one of bio because it depends on where the technology takes us mm. very different to old days and 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 you know i have to admit f most fascinating time of my life uh, in 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 healthcare is probably the fact that in a, in a matter of very few years we will see some breakthroughs that nobody would have expected uh, just 5 years ago so, you know, I often say the world has never been better. It's, you know, the world today as we speak is better than it was yesterday. I know it doesn't sound that or look that way when you open the, the papers and all that, but in the bigger picture, it's exactly what it is. We progress positively as a species. We become better and better. And I think we see technologies is just driving us or helping us, enabling us to uh, do something that people say, wow, that is so profound, much better than yesterday. Phenomenal amount of um, work and, and amazing research going on in the healthcare sector. But if you were to sort of nail down one particular um, scope or topic or, or, or something to highlight in the future, what would it be? Well, what excites me the most is this whole concept of going, uh, going from treatment to curing. Um, again, I don't think it's far away, not in all diseases, of course, and, and probably we will discover once we master all the diseases we know today, there will be other diseases popping up, uh, and popping up in, in a population age like from 110 to 130. Um, because, uh, again, my grandf uh, granddaughter that was born, you know, two weeks ago, you know, her life expectancy, lifetime expectancy, is more than 100 years. Um, and, 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 you know, 50 years from now, why would we not? I mean, you talked about 1.5 billion elderly people. The next batch of the, of the 1.5 that moves up and become a new 1.5 billion, they probably only have really serious problems when they exceed 100. Um, so that's, that's the fascinating part of where we are going. We will be a more healthy aging population uh, of these 1.5, age 65 and, and more. Um, so, uh, well, I can say fascinating world with, with a lot of promise. It's been fantastic talking to you, learning so much. Um, Henrik Wolf, thanks a lot. Thank you. Great, well, Mohamed Galal, really good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Greg. Welcome to 50 Mina Leaders. Thank you. Can you just, um, first of all, briefly just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role here at uh, Bayer? I'm a pharmacist by background, uh, Egyptian. I work it in Middle East for different countries. I work it in Kuwait, Jordan, Saudi, Egypt, and UAE. And I was lucky that I started with pharma business and then I moved to consumer health business. So I have relatively diversified experience in country level and on industry level as well. This helped me too much to understand the market, understand the people dynamics, different country culture, and helping me as well to put some aspect how to work in Middle East and create synergy for doing business in such markets. Let me ask you first about you know, what, what Bayer is actually providing for, the, uh, for consumers as part of its consumer health department. Perfect. Let me take the opportunity in the beginning just to talk about a little bit the consumer health. What does it mean consumer health? 
maybe people heard about OTC business, consumer health, but what does it mean? Consumer health, this is way of dispensing products which increase the accessibility for the consumers and for normal people to improve their daily life. So it's not related to prescription products. So prescription products, this is a product which you need uh, authorized and valid prescription from healthcare professional. And this will not be dispensed without this prescription, which is not the case in consumer health. Consumer health, this is a widespread elements of life. It, we cannot say disease, it's just symptoms. If we are talking about acidity, some skincare products, some nutrition. So there is no need for prescription into this. Uh, Bayer had been more than uh, since uh, 1880s in, in globally. In Middle East, we had been founded in almost uh, more than 90 years in, in Middle East. And uh, nowadays we can see that uh, Bayer still going and investing, establishing different business. Uh, we have our purpose, Science for Better Life. So we are uh, giving new products with innovation, not only for the products, but even for our resources and the way that we are reaching to the consumer. And uh, we are investing in the region because Middle East, one of the regions where we see uh, it's the highest growing region after Latin America. So most of the multinational focusing on this region. And one of our investment here in the countries, we are focusing in two main, main aspects where we increased our supply chain footprint through different distribution centers in Egypt and in Saudi Arabia. In addition to that, we have legal entities in Egypt, in Saudi, in uh, Emirates, of course, our, our, our main headquarter, in addition to Jordan. So the company, usually, we are looking how we increase our presence and our footprint uh, in the region. So this through continuous support for how we can reach to our consumer in easiest way and how we can be accessible and giving our consumer different options and different solution to improve their daily life. Usually consumer health, we are talking about the self healthcare or self personalized health. So we are not talking mainly about diseases. That's why we can be available easily for each family in each home. So we are trying to increase our innovation to improve our daily life for our consumer here in Middle East. So if there are massive advances in, in the platforms and the trends, how is Bayer kind of taking advantage of that or, or utilizing it to its best advantage? Actually, during the last uh, couple of years and even before, uh, before COVID, Bayer started globally and here in Middle East in different digital and online platforms. Uh, with the objective of uh, using the technology and getting the advantage of technology, how we can reach to our consumer and to our customers. Uh, maybe the, our interest and our customer interest before COVID, it was not on the same level. Uh, but with COVID, uh, Bayer luckily was one of the companies who was ready for this uh, revolution, so we started very early. And the main objective for us to uh, give the information scientific information to our consumer in easy way, in reachable and accessible way, uh, in the way that he would like to get benefit. And when we are talking about COVID, we need very short message in 15 seconds or 30 seconds to be reached to our consumer through different channels, which was very new for us. We learned it from uh, different industries like FMCG, and uh, we, took, we took lots of tips from them how we can accelerate our process. Because the, the, main, the main difference between FMCG and the consumer health company is the speed of action. Okay, we are coming from very conservative industry, which is the pharma business, and they are coming from more liberal industry. So nowadays we can see this mix and the creating a new umbrella of consumer health, health business. Uh, Bayer partnered already with uh, lots of uh, uh, new platforms in the market how we can reach to our physicians, for example, for healthcare professional uh, through tele-prescription or tele-promotion. Uh, 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 we have lots of webinars as well with, uh, with people, and this is something, again, it's another dream. If we were talking uh, to healthcare professional to attend webinar online, maybe we might invite 100, 10% maximum will, will respond. But now 100, we can receive 120 because they are talking to each other to contribute into this. So it became the preferable uh, way of communication 
and this will continue during the upcoming period. It's not only for different platforms how we can reach the uh, healthcare professional, but also for our consumer. So we have lots of consumer events where we have uh, very nice speakers talking with with the consumer for the uh, their daily life, how they can improve their daily life, how they can take precautions uh, or taking more advantage to improve their uh, daily health. And we can see this is improving now. Almost after COVID stage, we can see uh, we are working in hybrid model, and this will continue forever because this put new standard and uh, more efficient, which is surprisingly, okay. And uh, I think all parties now they are fascinated with new, this new approach, and we can see carriage from different stakeholders. Either we are talking about. Uh, healthcare professional or consumer people companies even because because in in some incidences it cost millions for companies so now we are taking this saving and investing more into research innovations new solutions for the consumer so we can see now different uh, mix for the investment how we can invest differently and properly uh, to reach to our consumer because by the end our consumer is our main target how we can reach them, giving them the proper products, proper information, proper resources to increase their prophylaxis and increase their everyday health. So would you say just finally that the, the consumer stands to benefit from the changes that we've been seeing in the last few years? 100%. And, and that is, that is the, the mix for everything. Mix of innovation, mix of uh, the new technology, mix of the restrictions because usually restriction come up with some positives. So I do believe now the information, the awareness, the, uh, the, the scientific information, it became very important and crucial to be reached easy to the consumer. And here I would like to thank as well the healthcare professional because their continuous guidance for their consumer, it lead them gaining a trust in the consumer health company, trust in the consumer health products. Now we are talking about different categories, which is almost the widespread elements in, in the daily life, nutrition, multivitamins, allergy, uh, skin care, uh, prenatal multivitamins. So lots of initiative had been now and cardiovascular protection, which is very, very important element as well. And all this, it's in favor of the consumer and in favor of the markets as well, because one of the most advantages for the uh, consumer health industry, it's a saving for the health authority as well. Because in case we will be able to control, early, early control some, some diseases, this will improve the quality of life, increase the productivity as well, and will reduce the uh, uh, health institution's cost. Because the, the consumer at this stage, he will not no need to go more into to meet healthcare professional or doing investigations. So are relatively have different objectives to support consumer, to support healthcare professional, and to provide more scientific and medical information to the consumer in proper way. Fantastic, incredible to hear how far advanced uh, the consumer health sector is, is advancing in the future, yeah. amazing. Mohamed Galal, thanks a lot. Thank you, Greg, thank you very much. Have a good day.